here's here's another part of an argument perhaps and this this is more of perhaps a legal argument that this wasn't the case back in 2001 but it is now wikipedia has a reputation it's a very important reputation because if something appears on wikipedia a lot of people just assume that it's factual right um and well, what are people supposed to do when uh, lies, really damaging lies, occur in that sort of situation? Uh, well, um, they could try suing the Wikimedia Foundation, but w the Wikimedia Foundation is going to cite Section 230. They can try to sue the uh, the user, but how are they going to find out who the user is if the user is anonymous? So they could sue, there could be a class action lawsuit against the Wikimedia Foundation to the following, um, by uh, all these people who are harmed by the Wiki Wikipedia system, which basically allows all of these anonymous people to, um, to say damaging things that have no recourse. That's itself a damaging situation for all of those people. It's a, it's a perfect class action lawsuit because it's a whole class that is affected by, think, the, um, by the, the situation. Do you think it would force Wikipedia, Wikimedia to shut down if they were sued like that? Probably not. I mean, they, something had happened, I hope. <laughs> I, I know they ask for donations every year. That they, it seems like they're bootstrapped. I don't know if they're well, actually getting funded by Google. And they're, they're, they've, they've probably got enough money, but you still got to fund They've raise. got a lot of money, and they've got a huge endowment. And they're not hurting for money in any way, shape, or form. I had uh, some smear pieces written about me. I mean, it happens periodically, but I don't get it nearly as much as some other people, which is really fascinating to me. So, I, you know, I pulled up Andy Noe's uh, Wikipedia, and boy, is it in-depth. Like, they, these people write about everything the guy does. My Wikipedia is like kind of barren, and they're like, why won't anybody write about this guy? I guess no one really cares. But when, when, I, when I had articles written about me that smeared me, I remember I called a, a, a lawyer. I called some friends, some people with legal experience. And I was told this news article... First, if an academic writes an opinion piece and then a news outlet says, a new study says Tim Pool does X, you can't sue the news outlet. They're referencing a study. Now, the study will claim that they just analyzed information and are giving an expert opinion. You can't sue them either. So, OK, so what do you do when an academic who's an ideologue for the for what do they call the humanities asserts something to be a scientific fact when it's just their absurd opinion? Nothing. Well, when, the, when a news outlet actually smeared me definitively as the writer, I had talked with a lawyer and they said, you can't sue. And I said, why? And they were like, the things they're saying about you are opinions. And I was like, but this is a news article. They're saying Tim Pool did this. And they're like, yeah, but that's an opinion. And I was like, I don't, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm flabbergasted by this. I think that, you need a new lawyer. No, no, no. I've talked to many lawyers and they are correct. So I, I, I talked to lawyers for 10 years about copyright infringement, manipulation, lies and smears. And I, 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 I'm not going to pretend to be as, as well versed as a lawyer, but I've been through this many times. The problem was when so if, if they if they were in an article that says Ian Crossland is a white supremacist neo-Nazi who, who, who associates with neo-Nazis, those are all opinions. You can't sue them. Well, James O'Keefe sued because the New York Times said they were deceptively editing or, or something to that effect. And this is when we got new, new precedent, or at least something you could, you could reference so far, where the judge said, if you are writing a fact-based news article or an article that's purporting to be fact, stands to reason if, you have, if your employees are injecting or interjecting their opinions, you must inform your readers of that. This is what brings me to the, ar the argument I'm making about Wikipedia. Same exact argument made by that judge. If Wikipedia is asserting two things, that their articles are cited with reliable sources, and the articles are not opinion pieces. This is an encyclopedia, right? Encycl encyclopedia means fact. It's the facts about the, the issue. But they're not showing the user posts, nor are they putting this article was authored by and a list of every single person who wrote it. Then Wikipedia itself is making this statement. So it's a very similar argument I'm looking at. This is what's changing the game. And it's only possible because Project Veritas decided to sue, even though many lawyers probably said you can't win. 
They said, we're going to sue anyway. I've talked to way too many lawyers. I've talked to James about this on the show. We've talked about this. And it's very difficult. James O'Keefe up on his website, take this out. Over at projectveritas.com, they have a donation page. Donate to support our lawsuit against the New York Times. They're trying to raise $1 million. And you know what? I'm willing to bet it's going to cost them more than a million dollars to sue the New York Times. So when you're a small YouTuber or Twitter personality, or maybe you got 100,000 followers, and then a news outlet that has a 24-year-old far-left extremist who writes articles for them, writes mangled garbage saying Ian Crossland is a white supremacist, how are you supposed to have a million dollars to sue a major news organization? That 20, 22 to 24-year-old psychopath has the powerful institution at their back, and they can say whatever they want. You can't. So this is why we talked about this with James of the People's Def- Defamation Defense Fund. We're entering, a ter- we're entering territory where everyone is a public figure. A kid standing on the stairs, the Lincoln Memorial, was what they tried arguing he was an involuntary public figure. You got a Twitter account, they'll argue he's a public figure. She's a public figure. Therefore, the actual malice standard applies. How is somebody who is just like a social media user supposed to compete with the New York Times? It's a scary thing. Hmm. Project Veritas got past the motion to dismiss. And they're, they're well-funded. You know, I think they're a multi-million dollar operation. You can look at their, their 990s, their, their, their tax forms, because they're a 501c3. And they have good money, but they don't, they don't make nearly as much as the New York Times does. The New York Times is bringing in, what, like 50 million a month or some ridiculous number from subscriptions? The New York Times can just say, okay, everybody halt this month. We're going to dump 50 million to nuke James O'Keefe. And what do you do? It's called lawfare. So James has gotten pretty far, and it's, it's amazing. This guy... You know, the right, conservatives, moderates, the anti, anti-establishment, whatever you want to call this faction, has very few active personalities, has very few individuals willing to go to war. The left, every single person on the left, for the most part, is willing to go nuts. They even throw bricks through windows and risk jail time. It makes me but people of, on the right don't do that. It makes me think of David and Goliath, this whole, this whole story, that Goliath is the large, unstoppable warrior guy, and David's this little guy that has no chance in the eyes of the masses of winning. But because he, he actually has a chance, he knows he has a chance, and he has precision strike, he's able to throw a rock into the eye of Goliath and then blind him and then take him down. But he really had the ability to do it. If you have no ability, don't try. You're going to get killed. But James has, has righteousness on his side, I believe. These people are doing the wrong thing. New York Times. Well, well, was well def- it seems like they are defaming, but, but Twitter seems like they are right, defaming. Right, right. You, you, you are correct, but you have to recognize David still needed the rock and the sling. Yes. So there's a lot of people with righteousness on their side, or a better word, a better way to phrase it is the truth on their side, but do they have the sling and the rock? Which is the money, the fundraising. Exactly. To be able to pay the lawyers. And if mm-hmm. you're a random beggar on the street seeking to defeat Goliath, and people are like, I don't know you, and you're walking around begging, you're not going to get the resources yeah. you need. Well, I like this people's defamation. De- PDF. PDDF? What P-D-D-D-F. Is PDDF? <laughs> yes, yeah. like that. Like basically uh, an open community fund that will help people sue for defamation against these large I, I think Wikipedia needs to be sued. On, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, let, me, let me tell you something. I remember when um, Cassandra Fairbanks sued over being defamed because someone claimed that she flashed a white power hand gesture. When she was just making the okay sign, it's not, it, it's not, but sure, whatever the media just kept saying it was because 4chan said it was, and congratulations, now it is. I, I wonder when I see a lot of these lawsuits, I'm very curious, like, why the arguments tend to be so weak. And, you know, typically I just assume I must not know enough about the law, you know, to frame a, popular, a, a proper legal argument, but then invariably these lawsuits fail. And I'm like, these judges are people. They're not morons. Have you tried explaining to them in basic terms instead of just making these ridiculous arguments? Why not just say like, take a look at your honor. What do you think? And then you might lose, I guess. There's probably there's good lawyers and there's bad lawyers, I suppose, one way to put it. But I'm wondering, why is it that I'm sitting here and I can see what Wikipedia is doing and I can I I, I can I can break down for you exactly what I see is wrong with this. And it's what I said. When you go to Twitter and you Larry tweet something, we know it came from you. But Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, and it doesn't list its users in the article. Even if you go to the New York Times, the New York Times puts a byline so you know who wrote it. Mm-hmm. Am I? Su- you know, I'll be honest. I can't tell you who wrote anything on my Wikipedia page. You know why? I'd have to go through three or 400 pages 
to look at every single individual to figure out what user this actually came from. Even then, you're only going to get IP addresses. Some often. of them, yes. Yeah. So it's not even an issue of coming from users. It's just random garbage splashed into a background that Wikipedia then publishes it under its own name. Nowhere on Wikipedia does it say this is user gener- does, it, does it say in the article, this article is written by a, an, an amalgam of users. Here are the users. Here's how many there are. They're going to need to buy wikipinion.com. It is Wikipinion. It basically is. That's all it is. It's Wikipinion. I'm sure they earn that. But, um, you know, so to summarize your point and the point that I was making then, um, Wikipedia has this this um, total, uh, how, how do you, you put it? Um, it? It has its reputation. It's asserting putting its reputation behind the claims, the factual claims that are in the articles. That's on the one hand. Now, on the other hand, they are not taking responsibility for the anonymous contributions, and yet it is precisely the system of anonymous contributions that um, that they're putting their reputation behind. So they're responsible, they're responsible for the anonymity that they they're they're uh, on principle they're re- they're responsible for the anonymity and therefore insofar as that is the cause of the the problem they bear the uh, the burden i wonder i wonder i wonder i wonder my my page on wikipedia is locked right now meaning users can't edit it without special permissions I mean, that sounds like you have to you have to have a certain number of edits, I believe. In order oh, well, to, that uh, sounds like a, a job criteria. What's the difference between the New York Times saying you have to have approval from the editor or Wikipedia saying you have to have approval from our editors? Yeah, well, I mean, they've got they've got uh, standards, but the standards are, are supposed to be enforced only by the uh, volunteers. So it's a volunteer community. That's what they're going to say. If Jane Doe writes an article for the New York Times saying Ian Crossland punched a dog. Oh, Jane, I'm coming And it's a false statement of fact. You could sue. The crazy thing is, even in that case, there's still actual malice and and, and anti-slab legislation. But the idea is you could sue the New York Times. James O'Keefe sued the New York Times because I think two reporters made statements about him. The New York Times as an organization is responsible for publishing the speech of these individuals. Why? They're just users on a website. Why is the New York Times responsible for liable, able to be sued over what users wrote? Because, because they're, they're in the pay. Because they're employees. Yeah. That means I should be able to uh, publish articles on TimCast.com as statements of fact and say whatever I want about, about anybody, and I can't be sued for it. If Wikipedia can do it, why can't I? <laughs> Yeah. Wikipedia has a has it has its 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 mass head. Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, and then it has all of these statements that are written by who I, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't think it should just be because they're paid employees of the New York Times, and that's why New York Times is liable. I think because like a social network that has unpaid users, if the social network masks that and just posts the users' comments as like Minds, if Minds was to do that, and this is Minds. Statement. So now, we can, we can open, that would also be equally suable, I would think. So th- so this this should mean that I can open up members of TimCast.com to submit articles that I choose, which will appear, and just say I didn't write it. It was a user on my website who submitted it. I just chose to have it published under my brand name, like Wikipedia does. And you can click the source and see only in the back end a list of different people who contributed to it, and IP ad- only an IP address. We have no idea who wrote it. Just IP. Sue me. What are they going to do? You know, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should clone the Wikipedia model because what will happen is if someone sues and wins, I'll go, oh, no, <laughs> then I'll turn around and sue Wikipedia. That's like for everything. If, you're, if they're committing war atrocities against your people and you start committing war atrocities against theirs, it's not necessarily the best tactic. I see your I'm, point. I'm not just saying to prove I'm, a point. I'm, like, look how horrible this is. No, I'm saying we, we but, can write we can write our opinions about people. I can it, look if Wikipedia is, get, is issuing opinion pieces and asserting their fact, then why can't I? I think you legally can right now. I would, I would, you know what I'll do? I'll have users write articles and I'll call it the encyclopedia from timcast.com and then I'll define encyclopedia and then people can write whatever they want. 
at least make a movie about it, like a short five minute ridiculous dystopian nightmare where everyone And then I'll just I'll just it. say section two thirty, you can't sue me over my over what my user said. And they'll say, Yeah, but you're the one who's choosing what's get published. I'll be like, so is Wikipedia. Twitter Twitter bans people. They choose what's acceptable on their site. Mm-hmm. I am simply moderating for for hate speech. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to timcast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.